when two objects which are moving collide it is either they maintain the kinetic energy which they had initially as a whole with the final kinetic energy that they are going to have both of them so say you've got m1 and then m2 so these two objects are moving in opposite directions and then they collide so after collision always when we are talking about momentum momentum has to be conserved so in any kind of collision whatsoever the kind of collision we can talk about momentum is conserved that is according to the law of conservation of momentum the momentum before impact is always equal to the momentum after impact and this momentum we are talking about is the sum of the two momentums that we have and so for the first ball so it is moving at a certain velocity u initially and then m2 is also moving at a certain velocity let's say this is u1 this one is moving at a certain velocity u2 initially after the collision this first ball starts to move at v1 and then the second ball starts to move at v2 this is after collision and so according to the law of conservation of momentum m1 u1 plus m2 u2 should be equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 where two v2 and v1 is representing final velocities u1 and u2 is representing initial velocity so this is momentum before impact this is momentum after impact this is equal now this is from the conservation of momentum when we are talking about elastic collision another thing that is conserved is kinetic energy well for any kind of collision energy is always conserved okay energy is always conserved but not kinetic energy kinetic energy is only conserved for elastic collision for any elastic collision energy is conserved but not kinetic energy that is because some kinetic energy is going to be converted to some other forms of energy like friction or heat or sound like that and so from kinetic energy we know that the kinetic energy of the first ball before impact plus the kinetic energy of the second ball before impact should be equal to their sum of kinetic energies after impact so first this formula which we can see here we can even rewrite it so the same way which we can see at this point so we are going to bring those terms which have got one to the same side so that is going to give us m1 u1 and then we'll bring that second one m1 v1 so we've brought this one and that is going to be equal to m2 v2 we'll take this one the other side that will be minus m1 u okay that is m2 sorry so that is m2 u2 so because mass is common there we can factorize out mass so that will give us m1 u1 minus v1 and that is going to be equal to m2 can be factorized then you've got v2 minus okay minus u2 this is u here that's the initial velocity now let's keep this equation this is from conservation of momentum where we are saying kinetic energy is conserved and so from conservation of kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy is given by half m v squared but initially to be half m1 u1 squared and then plus half m2 u2 squared this is the sum of the kinetic energies before impact and this should be equal to half m1 v1 squared and then plus half m2 v2 squared well from this we can see that the half can cancel out throughout the equation because it's common that one that one that one and that one all those can cancel out and so we're going to remain with m1 u1 squared I can bring this one which has got 1 minus m1 v1 squared and that is going to be equal to m2 v2 squared the one which has remained here and then I'll take this one the other side 
So that will give minus m2. And then now that is u2 squared. Well, mass is common at this point. I can factorize out m1 u1 squared minus v1 squared. And that should be equal to m2 v2 squared minus u2 squared. Now, we know that the difference of two squares when you have got this thing that exists, x squared minus y squared, that's the difference of two squares. So what we have here is a difference of two squares. So I can also write that as m1. So that is going to be u1 minus v1 and then u2, I mean it's still u1 there, u1 plus v1. That's the difference of two squares. And then the other side we've got m2. So we have v2 is the first minus u2. And then we're going to have v2 plus u2. Okay. So let's call this is equation 2. And then the one which we found here at this point as equation 1. So what we are going to do is we're going to divide equation 2 by equation 1. So we are going to write our equation 2, that is m1 u1 minus v1 u1 plus v1 and that is going to be equal to m2 v2 minus u2 and then we have v2 plus u2. So that is divided by equation 1 which is m1 okay it starts with u so that is u1 minus v1 and then the other side also divide by this second portion which is m2 v2 minus u2 so we can say that there are some things which are common m1 is common this is common that is common and then this is common. So from the conservation of kinetic energy, the equation that we use is u1 plus v1 is equal to what has remained the other side is v2 plus u2. Well, we can also rearrange this and say u1 plus v1 is equal to u2 plus v2. So this is from the conservation of kinetic energy. When we are talking about elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved to use this equation and momentum is also conserved to use the conservation of momentum equation. So let's consider this problem. <coughs> a tennis ball of mass 0 0.04 kg moving with a speed of 5 meters per second does an elastic head-on collision with a target ball. So we have got this ball which is moving at a speed of 5 meters per second. It has got a mass of 0 0.04 kg. It has got a collision with a mass. Okay, there's another mass like that, which is having a mass of 0 0.06 kg. And it is moving with a velocity of 3 meters per second. So for the first one, they are moving in the same direction. So that means this one will also be moving in that direction. Three at 3 meters per second. So if they do collide, what will be? Okay. After the collision, if the two balls are moving in the same direction. So now the question is, what is the velocity? So that is the first part. If they are moving in the same direction. So if they are moving in the same direction, let's go on to, the, to, the, to our formula. Momentum before impact, m1 u1 plus m2 u2 should be called momentum after impact m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so m1 that is 0 0.04 initial velocity is 5 m2 that is 0 0.06 initial velocity 
before impact is a 3 it is going to be positive because they're going in the same direction and then m1 is 0 0.04 we don't know the velocity at which it will be moving and then our m2 is 0 0.06 we don't know the velocity at which it will be moving also and so if we sum this portion supposed to get 0 0.38 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.04 v1 plus 0 0.06 v2 okay so let's take all right uh, what i can do here is i can make v1 the subject of the formula so i'll take this portion the other side so it will be 0 0.04 v1 is equal to 0 0.38 oh, i've written this is i've written this first and then this has remained positive so if i take this one the other side now it becomes negative so that is negative 0 0.06 v2 so now what i can do is i want to remain with v1 i can divide by 0 0.04 anyway i can even leave it just like this we call it zero equation one now because this is elastic collision kinetic energy has to be conserved so from conservation of kinetic energy we know that u1 plus v1 should be equal to u2 plus v2 now our u1 okay u1 at this point uh, the velocity at which it is moving it is at 5 we don't know v1 that is the final velocity for the first ball and then u2 is moving at 3 we don't know v2 so what i can do is i can make v1 the subject of the formula i'll take 5 the other side so it will be 8 3 minus 5 and that is going to give a negative 2 and then that will be plus v2 there okay and then this portion which i have I can go on and substitute where there is V1 at this point. I can put that. So I can remove just this portion here. And say 0 0.04. I can also start with V2 and then say minus 2. And that is going to be equal to 0 0.38 minus 0 0.06 V2. So let's go on and multiply. This will give us 0 0.04 V2 minus 0 0.04 multiplied by 2. That is 0 0.08. Then you have got 0 0.38 minus 0 0.06 V2. So I'll take this one, the other side, so that it adds up to this one. So that will be 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 which is giving me a 0 0.1 v1 i mean v2 and that will be got i'll take this on the other side so it becomes positive and it adds up to 0 0.38 so 0 0.38 plus 0 0.08 that is 0 0.46 now to remain v2 divide by 0 0.1 so that is giving 4.6 meters per seconds. So if this is V2, what will be V1? Well, we can use any equation. We know that this part which is here was coming from V1. We said V1 is equal to V2 minus 2. So V2 is 4.6 minus 2. So V1 will be 4.6 minus 2, which is equal to 2.6 meters per seconds. So this is the velocity at which you will be moving if they are moving in the same direction v1 will be moving at that velocity v2 at that velocity now let's consider part 2 where they are moving in the in opposite directions so the velo the direction of velocity has now changed this is the same magnitude but in the opposite direction so because it's in the opposite direction it will, it is going to be negative 3 meters per second so from conservation of momentum we know m1 u1 plus m2 u2 supposed to give us m1 v1 plus m2 v2 now m1 mass 1 is 0 0.04 it is moving at a velocity of 5 mass 2 is 0 0.06 it's moving at negative 3 because it's in the opposite direction mass 1 0 0.04 we don't know the velocity at which it will be moving 
minus 2 0 0.06 we don't know the velocity at which it will be moving also okay like that so if we multiply this first portion there we multiply this we multiply that and then we sum those values supposed to get 0 0.02 and that is going to give us 0 0.04 v1 plus 0 0.06 v2 that means this is our equation one and then we go to conservation of kinetic energy because this elastic collision u1 plus v1 is going to give us u2 plus v2 now u1 the initial velocity of the first ball is okay that is five and then plus v1 which we don't know the final velocity now the initial velocity of the second ball is negative three but we don't know its final velocity so i can take the three the other side is going to be positive and it to add up to the five so what you have is eight plus v1 is equal to v2 so where there is v2 i'm going to put eight plus v1 in the first sec first equation so this equation here i'll write it as 0 0.02 is equal to 0 0.04 v1 okay v1 plus 0 0.06 where there is v2 i'll put 8 plus v1 so this is 0 0.02 being equal to 0 0.04 v1 and then i'll multiply 0 0.06 by 8 that is 0 0.48 and then 0 0.06 times v1 what i'll do is i'll take this one the other portion and so it will be negative it will subtract so that will become now 0 0.02 minus 0 0.48 and then the other side we're going to have 0 0.04 v1 plus 0 0.06 v1 so 0 0.02 minus 0 0.48 that is negative 0 0.46 then 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 that is 0 0.1 v1 well to remain with v1 we we'll divide by 0 0.01 so v1 is going to be negative 0 0.46 divided by 0 0.1 so the answer is negative 4.6 meters per second. What of V2? We know that V2 is equal to 8 plus V1. So that is going to give us 8. V1 is negative 4.6. So 8 minus 4.6. That is V2 is moving at 3.4 meters per second. So that is it.